All right, good evening, everyone. Welcome to Cape Atlantic Live. I'm Brian Kniff alongside Buddy Tarbon. Sam Cohen handling the live video stream for us here as we are at Maxwell Field in Wildwood for uh, the Wildwood Warriors hosting the Shalik Cougars. And uh, even though it's early in the season, this is something you wouldn't have said a few years ago. Both of these teams are undefeated. Wildwood with a win in its opener, a thrilling win, comeback win, 28-21. They got the winning touchdown on a 16-yard quarterback sneak by Junior Hans. And uh, they uh, held on for the win. That was at that score was with 102 to go in the football game. It was a very, very entertaining game here at Maxwell Field. Shallot comes in at 2-0. and They've won two close games. And they are coached by Mike Wilson, who's a Middle Township resident, former Middle Township coach. But Shallot has wins over Gloucester and Pittman by scores of 17-14 and 14-13, respectively. And this is a Shallot team that has really rebuilt itself and uh, as strong as they are, and they're, they're a division winner, the bottom division in the West Jersey Football League. They're a division, defending division champion, but they're actually a junior heavy program. They only have five seniors among their 65 kids in the yeah, program. That's, so it's that's very, quite impressive. Very impressive. High School Football on CapeAtlanticLive.com. Brought to you by Not For Long Media. They're a strong supporter of the Cape Atlantic Live sports broadcast. Managed by NFL veteran and Cape May resident Colin Thompson, Not For Long Media is a content hub made up of several podcasts and YouTube shows talking all things sports, food, drinks, travel, culture, and much more. You can check them out at notforlongmedia.com. The Wildwood Crest Police Officers Association and the department's new canine unit are proud supporters of Cape Atlantic Live. For more information about supporting the Wildwood Crest Police Officers Association and the Wildwood Crest Canine Unit, contact Wildwood Crest Police at 609-522-2456. Shalik won the toss. They will receive, and uh, the Cougars are in their white jerseys with white helmets, trimmed in green, and the pants are green as well. Wildwood coached by Ken Loomis. They've got the maroon jerseys, white lettering, white helmets, white pants and uh, the officials for this evening's game Fred Lamb is the referee Dan O'Connell is the umpire Nicole Perrone is the headlines person Bob Makem the line judge Mike Reardon the side judge Colin Whipke Wildwood Crest's own Colin Whipke buddy is the field judge Sam Westfall is the timer here at Maxwell Field for this Cape Atlantic live broadcast and Brian, you know, uh, Shallot comes in. They're a, they're a team that really relies heavily on the ground game. They've only thrown the football nine times in their two games, right? Completing eight of nine passes. Um, their quarterback, Kenai Simmons, he's just a junior. He's seven of eight for 89 yards, but he's also carried the ball 30 times for 88 yards and two touchdowns. And their uh, their stud go-to guy, Reggie Allen has carried 27 times for 102 yards. Last year when Shalik beat Wildwood 29 to 12, Allen ran for 112 yards. He scored all four touchdowns uh, for the Cougars in that game. Between the Cougars of Shalik and your Wildwood Warriors. A nice crowd on hand, kind of a breezy, warm, humid evening here at Maxwell Field. But uh, Wildwood always gets good crowds at home. We were remarking about this before we came on. And the, one of the differences here is it always looks bigger. It looks more crowded than it is because unlike most high school fields, the stands here are in front of the track. So the stands are almost right on top of the field. And uh, it looks always looks a little more crowded here. And, and then Wildwood, Wildwood, of course, buddy, has its own murderer's row that stands down in the south end zone area. <laughs> of course, of course. And you know, Brian, it, you know, you bring up that fact. And what's nice about the way the Wildwood field is set up with the bleachers being closer, it's more of an intimate experience for both the fans and the players. All right, so they're about to play the national anthem. We'll step aside with the audio and come right back as soon as the anthem is complete.
Monica Kobarowski, Wildwood High senior on the national anthem here at Maxwell Field. And Brian, she sings better, better than her father, Rose. She doesn't miss a stroke or a beat. <laughs> At Shalik's captains, Kanai Simmons, Jake Sedlecki, Riley Papiano. Papiano is their leading tackler with 13 through two games. And Ron Piernikowski, their captains for Shalik. Wildwood's captains tonight, Ryan Troiano, Junior Hans, James Wires, and Nico Kalajiris. So Wildwood will kick off. Start this football game. We'll Try to give you some updates on some other games as we get reports. And Brian, you know, how, how important is the first you know, five minutes of this football game going to be to, to Wildwood High? Well, you know, the interesting thing is in talking to their coaching staff, you know, they felt like last week they played a team that was probably bigger and more athletic than Shalik. But what they, uh, but in Cumberland, but what they said was that Shalik was much, much more disciplined and this will be a much different opponent tonight. And obviously, Shalik has has a, a lot more depth than Wildwood. Shalik's probably got about, out of their 65 in their program, they probably have about 45 here, uh, whereas Wildwood's got about 30 or so in uniform. And that's one of the things that Coach Mike Wilson stressed when I was talking to him before the game, Brian, is you know the discipline that his team plays with, and they need to continue to play that way not give away yards via penalty, and take care of the football. Allen and Levi Feeney Childers are back deep for Shalik. Junior Hans will kick it. You're going to hear his name a lot tonight for Wildwood. He threw for 234 yards, ran for two touchdowns, and threw for two others the other night or last week, and also kicked two extra points. Yeah, there wasn't many things Junior did not do last week including keeping the water jugs full. Right. I mean, Junior was just all over the place. It is a, it is a kind of a pooch kick taken by an up man. It was caught. Leaping catch by Nyland Sutton. Shalik will take over first and 10 around their own 40. So Kanai Simmons leads the Cougars out. And they are going to mark the football, as Brian said. It's on the 40-yard line of Shalik, first and 10. Simmons in the shotgun, has Allen to his right. Takes the snap, he's back to pass. He's rolling right, throws. It's caught. It's going to be a 22-yard gain. And a nice catch down there by Nizir Winder. And I'll tell you what, if we talk about this is a run, a run heavy team. And what do they do in the first play? They do a little rollout. And Simmons shows he can really throw the football. That was He hit his uh, receiver right on the numbers. And as you said, Brian, you're going to call that a 21-yard gain. It's going to be down to the Wildwood 39. Good, good play call too, because Shalik has shown that all they want, all they really wanted to do the first two games was run. Showed that to Wildwood on film, and then they pass it on first down. Inside handoff, not getting far is Allen. And it looked like Nico Calajiris was in there on the stop, gain of just one. And uh, Nick Croce for a while would also instrumental in that stop. Second down and nine now for Shalik. Simmons takes the snap. He's back to pass again. He's flushed out. Throws too high. Well, it was actually a good, good decision right there. Yeah, he threw it over the head of yep. Dylan Sheehan. and Ryan Triano was right there. And this will bring up third down. And this 
this is interesting here, third and nine at the 39 of Wildwood, and, uh, or the 38 of Wildwood. And you would think, buddy, that this is four down territory for Shalik, so they don't need to get all nine on this play. The Shalik team that's only thrown the ball nine times through two games has already put it in the air twice. Hand off to Allen through the middle. We have a late flag coming in. Allen got about six. I think this is going to be a face mask against Wildwood. Let's see here. Yes, it is. That's going to give Shalik the first down. It's the five yard variety. But the five yards is enough because, uh, again, Allen was able to pick up six yards on the ground. So instead of it being fourth and, uh, and three, they pick up that first down via the face mask. So first down for Shalik at the Wildwood 27. Yeah, Shalik would have been in, a, in, a, in about a fourth and three situation there if not for the penalty. Two backs in the backfield this time. Low snap, Simmons digs it out. Gets it to Allen, slips through one tackle. It's taken down after a gain of about two. Well, that time uh, Simmons throws the ball to the left side of his, his offense and as he, he hits Allen. Allen does a good job. He cut back to the middle, but he just followed his blockers, Brian, and he took what the defense gave him. And you know, that's a, uh, looks like it's gonna be a four yard pickup. Well, it looks like about second and seven here. So no score, nine and a half to go first quarter. This is the first possession of the game here. Offensive possession for Shalik. Another handoff to Allen inside. And he's taken down at about the 20. This is a pickup of about four. And it'll bring up third and three. So a couple of big, this is a big defensive uh, stop situation for the Warriors as it will be, as Brian said, third and three. But now they have the football on the Wildwood 20, 8.45 to play here in the first quarter. Simmons surveys the defense, rolls to his right, throws, tipped by Harley Busham and incomplete. And that was a big tip because Jake Seidlecki was wide open in the flat, buddy. He probably would have had at least a seven to 10 yard gain. Harley Busham got his finger on that and knocked it away. Well, again, the senior playing out of that linebacker position did a good job in coverage, he was well, able to drop back, take away that passing lane. Yeah, and Wildwood blitzed from that strong side, and they guessed right on that play as Shalik ran that way, or ran the play that way. And Busham got his hands on the ball, brings up a big fourth and three early in the game. Can Wildwood get a stop here? Handoff, and they're not gonna get the first down. Great tackle. That was Made it. by James Wires after a gain of about one. And Wildwood's going to take over on downs. And that was, as you said, Brian, that was a big defensive play for the Warriors. Wires coming up from that uh, his, his position, his defensive back position. And that was just a pure, clean tackle. Not letting go, brings him to the ground. And as you said, now Wildwood will take over on their own 19-yard line. Crest Savings Bank is a proud supporter of Cape Atlantic Live Broadcast and CapeAtlanticLive.com. Banking since 1919. With branches across Cape May County to best serve you, check out all the services Crest Savings Bank has to offer at CrestSavings.com. So Junior Hans in the shotgun here for Wildwood. Brian Ortiz to his right. Hans back to pass, throws. It's caught by Busham. And Busham's going to lose a yard. Wide receiver screen. 
And Shalik was all over that. It's going to be second and 11. Wildwood had a lot of success last week, buddy, with uh, slant passes. A couple of those were taken for long touchdowns by Ryan Troiano and James Wires. So uh, that's going to bring up a second down and 11. The ball's back on the 18-yard line. 7.50 to play here in the opening quarter. We have no score. Four receivers for this set. Hans is going to run on a quarterback draw and gets back to the line of scrimmage only, or maybe got back to that original line of scrimmage on first down, maybe a pickup of one. Bring up third and long. And that's what they're going to they're going to give him that a one yard gain there. And as Brian just said, so now we're, we're looking at a third and ten. Well, for the Warriors. Uh, yeah, not only you know, not only are they at their own 19 on third and 10, buddy, but you know, if they have to punt here on fourth down, they're going to be punting against a pretty stiff breeze. Yes. So, so the wind's coming from out of the south. Three receivers split to this near side, one to the far side. No. The entire left side of Wildwood's offensive line moved early, so that's procedure. Now it's going to be third and 15. Yeah, and obviously that's not the type of penalty that Coach Loomis wants to see. Um, you talk about an unforced type of penalty, but nonetheless it is called, and as, uh, you know, as Brian said, it's going to be a five-yard loss, and it's going to bring up third and 15. Inside six and a half to play first quarter. Hans back, rolling to the near side, throws. It's incomplete. He was looking for Ryan Troiano, and, and that would have only been about a five yard gain anyway. And Wildwood will have to punt here. And again, as Brian said, he will be punting into a pretty stiff uh, breeze. And, you know, the big thing here is obviously you got to get the snap off, you know, so Hans can catch it and then get rid of the football via, the, via, via his right foot. So Hans is lined up short. Wildwood does this often. Liam Carmel's the snapper. Hans takes the snap, punts it away. It's high, takes a Wildwood bounce, and will be downed at the 42-yard line. So that will be a... About a 22-yard punt or so. Yes. With no return. Cape Atlantic Live sports broadcast and the CapeAtlanticLive.com website are proudly supported by Ribeye Steaks, serving the finest Angus Ribeye Steak sandwiches, sausage, roast pork, and much more, all on the freshest rolls in South Jersey. Be sure to check out Ribeyes at many of the major festivals and weekend events throughout Cape May County. For more information on Ribeye Steaks, 609-602-3378. Ulmer's Appliance is a proud supporter of Cape Atlantic Live and CapeAtlanticLive.com, a family-owned and operated business since 1974. Omer's Appliance services all the top appliance brands. Give Omer's Appliance a call, 609-368-4444, or check them out at omersappliance.com. So second possession for Shalik. They have it at the Wildwood 42. Back to pass again is Simmons being chased, and he's being taken down for a sack. And that time... Uh I actually think he might, yeah, they're going to be a little generous with the spot. Yeah, Nick Croce got him. I think he got back to the line of scrimmage. So technically, it's not a sack. It'll be a gain of zero. But a great play by Croce coming over from his left end position. Well, the bottom line is that, you know, they were able to uh, 
to get a shutdown play on that first and 10. You know, Shalik obviously wanted to come back out with some momentum, but that's one way to take, you know, to take a little bit of uh, air out of that big momentum. Hand off to Allen, has some room, and he's gonna have a first down and more, gain of about 11. Junior yeah. Hans on the stop. And that's a problem for Wildwood if Junior Hans is making a lot of tackles on running plays because he's the safety. Yeah, without a doubt. And as you just said, that was uh, Allen that time, and that was an 11-yard pickup. It's going to bring the ball inside the 31-yard line of Wildwood. 4.50 to play, first quarter. We have no score, but right now Shalik with excellent field position. Come on, Two backs in the backfield this time on first and 10. They hand it off again to Allen, goes up the middle. And he's gonna pick up about four or five. And again, right up the gut of that Warrior defense. And you know, Coach Mike Wilson for the Cougars, you know, said his team, they're gonna be patient. They're well disciplined as we can see and they're just gonna pick their spots and just continue to punch the football down the field you know, via the run game. But as we have seen already early in this first quarter, they will put the ball in the air. Second and six for Shalik. Ball at the Warrior 27 yard line. We're inside four minutes to go first quarter, no score. Feeney Childers is the lone setback this time. They hand off to him, and he'll have the first down. Pickup of about six or seven, and they'll move it down to the 21 yard line. And Childers, uh, he is just a sophomore, and he's one of their main men on the uh, offensive side of the football. And as Brian just said, he ran that one for six yards to pick up that first down for the Cougars. First and 10 at the 21 of Wildwood. Papiano and Feeney Childers in the backfield, flanking Kanai Simmons, the quarterback. Takes the snap, hands off to Feeney Childers. And that's a nice tackle out there by James Wires, the whole Feeney Childers to a gain of about three or four. Well, Otherwise, that would have been a big gain. Yes. Could have been a touchdown. And Wires doing a good job again, coming up from that defensive back position. And, uh, you know, right there, Brian, we've seen him make two open field tackles, and both of them were good tackles. He is He's fundamentally sound when it comes to uh, hitting, the, hitting the running back. Second and six for Shalik Ball at about the 17. Another handoff to Feeney Childers. And another face mask penalty is coming in on Wildwood. That was pretty obvious from here. And this might be the personal foul variety. It's Feeney Childers, you saw his head really get snapped back. And this is a gain of about two. And it'll be half the distance to the goal, most likely. And a first down. And that is exactly the call as the uh, the referee makes. Let's yeah, take it down, I believe, to about the nine yard line. That's exactly where it's going to go. So Shalik first and goal now. We'll have less than two minutes to go in the first quarter when this ball is snapped. Simmons takes it, drops it. It's picked up by Allen, and he's taken down for a loss of one, and that was a fortunate bounce for Shalik. As that had disaster written all over, but now it's second and goal from the 10. And again, Shalik just does, a, they do a good job of, of at least surrounding the play. So Allen was the only player around that football 
and he, you know, he did, he did a great job of making sure that he recovered it because, uh, you know, this football team now, the Cougars on their 10-yard, excuse me, Wildwood's 10-yard line. Simmons hands off to Allen through the middle. And he's down inside the five to the two or three. Shalik player Jake McGonigal slow to get up, but he looks like he's okay. Oh, now he goes back down again. That was an eight-yard run by Allen. We'll have a timeout on the field. It'll be third and goal with the two for Shalik. Hall's Carpet Care is a proud sponsor of Cape Atlantic Live Sports Broadcast and the CapeAtlanticLive.com website. Specializing in carpet and upholstery cleaning, air duct and dryer vent cleaning, and home watch services. Hall's Carpet Care gives you the clean you expect and the service you deserve. Check them out at hallscarpetcare.com or give them a call. 609-463-3733. Bell Harbor Hotels in Wildwood Crest supports high school football in Cape Atlantic Live and capeatlanticlive.com. A beautiful oceanfront resort. The Bell Harbor sits directly on one of the East Coast's best beaches in Wildwood Crest. Know someone planning a vacation or needs a room for a night or two? Have them check out the Bell Harbor through bellharborhotels.com or by calling 609-522-3343. Square One Design has nearly 20 years of experience designing websites, building online marketing campaigns, and creating custom web applications. Square One Design is a proud sponsor of high school football at capeatlanticlive.com. So again, 52 seconds to go here in the opening quarter. Shalik with the ball on the Warrior two yard line, third and goal. Keeping it is Simmons, and they're gonna take him down for a loss. It's gonna be a loss of three. Wildwood was not fooled on the belly keeper. And it's going to bring up fourth and five, a fourth and goal from the five. Let's see what Shalik does here. I think they're going to call a timeout to think about it. Do they want to go for it here or try to kick? Well, they do have a field goal kicker right. who's one for two. Yeah, they, they kicked the field goal earlier yeah, this year. And he's made a 32-yarder. Yeah. And but there is, even though that wind is in his back, it's also a little bit of a crosswind and they'd be kicking at a, a pretty severe angle. So it's certainly, uh, and, and no kick at the high school level is a gimme, but uh, you know, even though it would be a short field goal attempt, certainly would not be automatic. So we'll see what happens after this play here on fourth and goal from the five as Shallot calls that timeout. The Wildwood Recreation Department, the Byrne Community Center proudly support high school football in Cape Atlantic Live. Be sure, to kept, uh, be sure to check out their big event for the Halloween season, a trunk or treat and a haunted house at the Burn Community Center on Friday, October 27th from 5 to 8 p.m. Call 522-5837 for more information. So fourth and goal, Shalik is going to go for it. They're setting up the swinging gate play. Allen is behind Simmons. Wildwood's going to call a timeout. That's a good call there by Wildwood. Wildwood actually needed more players to go yes. with the swing, with the uh, linemen and everybody that, yeah, the gate, that lined up over to the left. The gate was wide open. Yes, it was. <laughs> yes, it was. And that was, a, that was a good timeout, as Brian just said. It's fourth, fourth down, goal to go from the four. There's now 14 seconds left here in this opening quarter. We have no score, but the Cougars are knocking on the door. Cabrera Companies are a strong supporter of local sports coverage on Cape Atlantic Live and CapeAtlanticLive.com. Whether it's buying or renting property at the Jersey Shore, management services for homeowners and condo associations, or residential home repairs and home improvements, be sure to check out Cabrera Companies. Locally owned and operated in Wildwood Crest. Log on to CabreraCompanies.com or call 855-633-2300 for more information. So a couple of timeouts here, each team taking one. And Shalik now will 
Another funky formation here. Man goes in motion, it's Allen. They hand off to him, he tries to throw, it's incomplete. And Wildwood had that one read well as well, well also. Yeah, it, it, you know, it's interesting, buddy, because fortunately for Wildwood, that was incomplete. There was no flag called. There was a Wildwood player trying to get out into the flat to defend that play, and a lineman for Shallot just grabbed them around the waist. And there was no flag there for holding, but it falls incomplete on the trick play. And Wildwood will take over on downs at their own five yard line with 10 seconds to go in the first quarter. So Wildwood's played much of this quarter on defense, but so far Shalik with no points and Wildwood will be happy to get the wind at its back. Oh yeah, absolutely. For the second this quarter. is gonna be just strictly one play. Hans hands it off inside. And picking up a yard or two is Brian Ortiz Centeno. And that will end the, end the, the first, first quarter. quarter. No score. So 0-0, Wildwood will have a second and eight when we start the second quarter. Be sure to check out the Mud Hen Brewing Company, the Dog Tooth Bar and Grill, and Poppy's Brick Oven Pizza and Kitchen in Wildwood for great dining and entertainment experiences for the entire family. And congratulations to the Mud Hen on recently being named the best brew pub in New Jersey. The Mud Hen, the Dog Tooth, and Poppies proudly support CapeAtlanticLive.com. Need a place to park your vehicle ahead of a great day or evening out in the Wildwoods? Check out Smitty's Parking with two locations on Ocean Avenue, just steps from the world-famous Wildwood Boardwalk. And don't forget that the Smitty's location at Young's Avenue has great rates on all kinds of bike rentals. Give Smitty's a call, 609-522-9114. So we will move to the second quarter here with Wildwood and Shalik scoreless. And Wildwood stopping Shalik on downs inside its own 10 yard line a few moments ago. Yeah, and Brian, no matter how you look at it, that was a big defensive series for the Warriors. You know, they really held tough, um, came up with a couple big defensive plays, not, not allowing Shalik to punch the ball in. You know, so that, that keeps the game. Shallot goes down there on that drive, and if they score, obviously it's a momentum shift. And Wildwood didn't allow that. Now, if they can pick up a couple of first down, down, he, down here with the football, you know, starting at their own six-yard line, second and eight, as we start this second quarter. I mean, right now this game is just – looking for somebody to take control, but both defenses are playing outstanding. Second and eight for Wildwood at their own seven. Ortiz Centeno is the only setback next to Junior Hans. He takes the snap, throws out into the flat. It is tipped and intercepted. Tipped and intercepted. Pass was intended for Gabe Rossett, and Rossett tried to run before he secured it, and wow. Shalik will have it at the Wildwood 11-yard line. That had, you know, had that ball been caught cleanly, buddy, that looked like a promising play for Wildwood, but yeah, it wasn't. Well. It was tipped the second time by a Shalik defender, popped up in the air, and I actually didn't catch the player who dove and caught it. I know you're so worried about your stats. <laughs> no, but that, that was just a real tough break as that ball. It was actually Jake Seidlecki. Not only does Sam do the camera, he's our spotter too. First and, uh, goal, uh, first and 10 at the 11. Hand off to Allen. Short gain. And Reggie Allen Jr. with a pickup of about two. Second down and eight. At the nine yard line of Wildwood. Early stages, second quarter, no score. Nice 
Another handoff to Allen. He's got a lot of room this time. And he's going to be up close to the goal line. He might have a first down. Now actually, buddy, it looks like he's forward progress. They're going to mark him back at the three. So that's a gain of six. Are right, they marking it at the two? Check that. So Shallot can get a first down without getting a touchdown. Right, we'll get a first down on a short game, but they're only two yards away from the end zone. Hand off to Allen. And he is in for the touchdown. Yeah, that time he took the ball off the left side of the center and the left side of that offensive line for the Cougars did a good job uh, in giving Allen just a little bit of turf that he needed. And then Allen did the rest, keeping them legs churning to go in for the score. Hunter Dragada is on for the extra point. Jace Volivar is his holder. Dragada is a left-footed kicker. Snap and a hold are good, and Dragada's kick splits the uprights. So, with 10.34 to go, Shallot capitalizes on that, on that interception deep in Wildwood territory, and they score the first points of the game, and they lead 7-0 with 10.34 to go in the first half. Not for long, media is a strong supporter of Cape Atlantic Live Sports Broadcast. Managed by NFL veteran and Cape May resident Colin Thompson, Not For Long Media is a content hub made up of several podcasts and YouTube shows talking all things sports, food, drinks, travel, culture, and much more. You can check them out at notforlongmedia.com. While with Crest Police Officers Association and the department's new K-9 unit are proud supporters of Cape Atlantic Live and Cape Atlantic Live Sports Broadcast. For more information about supporting the Wildwood Crest Police Officers Association and the department's canine unit, contact Wildwood Crest Police at 609-522-2456. So we'll see if uh, Wildwood can respond here. They've had, Wildwood has run uh, just five offensive plays in this game so far with 10.34 to go in the second quarter. And they trail 7 nothing. And while would you know, they, they've not picked up a first down, Brian. You know, and obviously the first uh, first possession, it was a, a, three, a three and out. And then the second possession ended on the very first down with, right. with that tipped interception. Hans and Troiano are back deep to receive for Wildwood. Now, Dragata is kicking into the wind. So, Hans and Troiano have moved up to outside their 10 yard line. I'm sure, Shalik will try to kick this thing away from Hans. And they do. It's high. Troiano takes it at the 17. Runs straight up the field and runs right into two Shalik players at around the 25-yard line. Wildwood will take over there. Pretty effective kickoff and coverage by Shalik. And that was Jake Seidlicky, Brian, who made that initial hit. He's a nice player. Yeah, he, he kept his helmet right on Ryan Triano's numbers. And, you know, he wasn't missing him. And then a teammate came up and helped him finish him off. So the Warriors take over on their own 24-yard line. 10.30 to go here in the first half. And it is Shalik 7, the Warriors 0. And like Brian just said, it is now time to see how the Warriors respond. They don't have to get it all back on one play. Ortiz Centeno lined up behind Hans. Hans keeps, rolls to his right, cuts it back, still on his feet. Running outside, and he's gonna have a first down and a lot more all the way up near midfield. Gonna mark him down at the 48, and it's a 24-yard run by Junior Hans. Well, that's one way to respond. 
You put the ball in the playmaker's hands and no let doubt. him make something. And what he did, he made a lot of guys from Shalik miss as he then headed to that left sideline. And as Brian said, he stepped out on the 48 of Wildwood. But hey, that's a 24 yard gain. That's the Warriors first, first down. And obviously their biggest offensive play. Yes, and they're, they're right there. Now Wildwood just needs to keep the ball moving forward. So first and 10 at their own 48, and they've certainly flipped field position a little bit here. Because that was an issue for Wildwood in that first quarter. Hans takes the snap, hands it off to Ortiz, said Tenno. Look for a moment like he had some room. Yes. And then closing quickly Very was T.J. Heimer. That's a nice play by him. And Ortiz Centeno picks up, actually doesn't pick up anything. No, and I'll tell you, you know, T.J. Heimer, uh, and again, talking to Coach Wilson, he's one of the standout defensive players for the Cougars. And he expects Heimer to make plays like that. And he certainly did not let him down right there. And as you said, Ortiz looked like um, Ortiz Centeno looked like he had he looked like he was going to pick up some yards, you know. But then bang, just like that, he gets shut down, and it's a no gain, second and ten. Two receivers split to each side. Troiano goes in motion now to the far side. High snap. Hans running right. Wow. And he's taken down. And I don't know what happened there, but that ball was snapped before anybody was ready. Yeah, that ball clearly just sailed way over Junior Hans's head. It's a loss of 17. And I'll tell you right there, I mean, obviously being the playmaker that he is, Hans was trying to make something happen out of nothing that was there. And he took two big hits. Uh, courtesy of the Cougars. So it's third and 27. Eight and a half to go first half, seven nothing Shalik. And Wildwood's got to call a timeout here. Junior Hans was yelling back toward the sideline. Look, if there was some confusion, so Wildwood has to take their second timeout of the period on third and 27. Crest Savings Bank is a proud supporter of Cape Atlantic Live broadcasts and CapeAtlanticLive.com. Banking since 1919 with branches across Cape May County to best serve you. Check out all the services Crest Savings Bank has to offer at CrestSavings.com. Hall's Carpet Care is a proud sponsor of Cape Atlantic Live Sports Broadcast and the CapeAtlanticLive.com website. Specializing in carpet and upholstery cleaning, air duct and dryer vent cleaning and home watch services, Hall's Carpet Care gives you the clean you expect and the service you deserve. Check them out at HallsCarpetCare.com or give them a call 609-463-3733. So it's third and 27 for Wildwood here. Now, again, Brian, this is not the type, you're not going to get all 27 yards back on one play. You know, Wildwood's got to try and get half the yards back, and now we got well, another penalty. Yeah, another Wildwood player moved early along that offensive line. So it's another motion penalty against the Warriors, and that's going to make it third and 22. Uh, it's fourth and thir third and 32. Excuse me. Third and thir third and 32. That's what I meant. Yeah. <laughs> There's so much space between where the ball is and the first down marker, buddy. About 12 real estate agents just pulled up to the field. Yes. Mobile homes ready to go. <laughs> third and 32. Hans back to pass, looking, dancing around, still looking, rolling right. Flag down, thrown, it's caught. This is gonna come back. Caught by Rossett, but this will come back for a hold, I believe. It 
was a gain of 19. Yeah, that's a tough one to give back, obviously. And Junior Hans did a great job extending that play, but what happens a lot of time with inexperienced linemen, there's going to be a hold with the amount of time you know, the junior was buying. I don't know what the discussion is here. You got it. Wow, this surprises me. It actually surprises me that Shalik is, is declining this penalty. Man, I know it's fourth down and Wildwood has to punt, but man, you just you just saved Shalik by declining that penalty. Just saved Wildwood 30 yards in field position. So that 19 yard reception by Gabe Rossett will stand. It'll bring up fourth and 13. And Wildwood will now have the ball on their own, on their 45 yard line. And as Brian just said, Fourth down and 13, 8.01 to go here in the first half. It's Shalik seven, the Warriors zero. Now Wildwood is lining up in a play, but that doesn't necessarily mean they'll run a play. Hans often punts out of this formation. He takes the snap, he's back to pass. He's looking, and now he's gonna punt it and he bombs it. The wind's gonna take this, and can Wildwood save it? They do! What a play by Ryan Troiano to knock it back, and James Wires falls on it on the one yard line. And that's exactly why that is a colossal mistake by Shalik not taking that holding penalty on Wildwood. Well, obviously right there, the proof was in the pudding because uh, Junior Hans bought a little bit more time with the ball in his hands, and then he got off a, a tremendous punt, very clean, got it up high and into the wind, and wow, what an athletic play did Ryan Triano just make for the Warriors, Brian? Yeah, and I'm not positive of the rule in high school, buddy, but I don't think the player necessarily has to stay out of the end zone because Wires may have been in the end zone, may have I been touching thought, that line yeah. as he fell on the ball, but the ball never went in. And I think at the high school level, that's all that counts. So it's first and 10 for Shalik at their own one yard line, seven and a half to go before halftime. Uh, critical to, for Shalik to execute this snap. They hand it off inside and not much doing there. And actually, actually, Allen on second effort may have gotten up close to the five. Check that. They call it a three yard gain. They'll mark it at the four. But again, Reggie Allen Jr. keeps those legs churning, and uh, that's exactly what they're saying. It's a three-yard gain to the four-yard line, second and seven. Oh, D, get in there, baby. Simmons takes the snap, hands to Allen, cuts it back inside, and he's gonna get up to about the nine-yard line. They'll bring up third and two. Well, again, and they gave him a favor, favorable spot at the 10, so it's actually third and one. 6.20 to go before halftime. And again, right now, it's a big defensive play for the Warrior defensive front. I mean, if they can get a stop here and force Shalik to punt the football, I mean, that's going to be big, but you know, Shalik also knows what they need to do behind that big offensive line. If you're Wildwood here, you really got to watch the ball. They hand it off. Allen has the first down and a pickup of about six. Wildwood blitzed one of their defensive backs and it almost looked like Allen hit that hole where the defender was. So I'll move it out to the 16-yard line, first and 10 for Shalik. 
Five and a half to go before halftime. Cougars leading Wildwood 7-0. They capitalized on a Wildwood interception deep in Warrior territory and scored a couple plays later on a Reggie Allen two-yard scoring run. Simmons hands again to Allen. Picks up about four. Well, again, the Cougars, you know, Coach Mike Wilson, they're just showing patience, not looking for a big play. They're just running the ball right up the gut of the Warrior defense, you know, and they're take four yards at a clip. Ball squarely like, on the 20 yard line. Looks like the big sophomore, Eric Jordan, defensive tackle, a little shaken up on that play, but he stays in. Second down and six. Cougars with the ball on their own 20 yard line. Handoff outside. And a good play by James Wires. As he takes down Levi Feeney Childers. Tell you what, that was a good play. But again, Wires Man. just showing great tackling form. Feeney Childers may have gotten one, so it's third down and five. And this is a really, really big play for the Wildwood defense here with 4-11 to go in the half. Wildwood trailing 7-0. Yeah, for the Warriors, Brian, this is base, This is a must-stop situation. Salik resetting its players here. They take the snap. They throw. It is incomplete. There should have been a flag on the far side. There was still a Shalik player moving who never set. Yeah, and that's that exactly what happened. The wide receiver that, that, that went to the far, far left, he did not set. He just kept he kept running. He and just and, turned and, up and, field. Well, and the difference is there were a bunch of players who were moving. So when you have multiple players moving, all of them have to set before then someone else can go in motion. He never set. And I, I don't know why there was no flag thrown on that play. Gabe Rossett, who broke up the pass, is shaken up on the play. And if you're if you're getting a good look on the video, you see exactly why he's shaken up. Yes. But I'll tell so you what. Bring up fourth and five. You, Brian, you really got to credit this Warrior defense. They they're they are not they they might be bending a little bit, but they are not breaking. Well, and let's face it, Wildwood would have declined that penalty anyway to make it fourth and five. I just don't understand how you can miss that. All those players for Shalik yes, were yes. moving, and that receiver who was still moving to the sideline yes. never reset. Absolutely did not. Simmons is back to punt. High snap, pulls it down, gets it away. It's high but short, and it's fielded. Wow, that's a dangerous play. I don't know why the whistle blew. Yeah, really. But it was fielded by Wildwood's Thomas Rios. I think it's an inadvertent whistle. That's going to cost Wildwood a couple of yards here. Wildwood will just get the ball where that whistle was blown. Well, that's not a good explanation. Well, I'm just saying. I don't that. want to be nitpicking. But yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, no, I hear you. Yeah. That's not a good. That was wide open in the wide open aspect of the field. There was nobody. No defender was even close. Now Rios, you know that was a dangerous play by by Rios, but he actually probably saved Wildwood five or seven yards of field position. And the Warriors are going to have the ball at the Shalik 40 with 3:48 to go before halftime, with an opportunity to get in the end zone here before halftime. And what's important too, buddy, is the fact that Wildwood gets the ball to start the second half. Well, exactly. And you would like to get some momentum. 
again here. 3.48 to play, plenty of time. You do not have to score on one play. Take some time off the clock. Yeah, you know, give what Shalik's, take what Shalik's giving you. It's a handoff to Ortiz Centeno. Decent gain on first down of about three or four. Well, again, that's positive. right up the middle, right between the uh, left guard and the center. And, uh, you know, Coach, uh, Coach Ken Loomis, you know, her take that three yards in a cloud of dust, bringing up a second down and seven. The, uh, buddy, time not critical yet, but Wildwood only has one timeout left as uh, we approach 3.15, so to go in the first half. Well, Three the receivers split to the far side. Troiano inside, Busham outside of him, and all the way wide is Rossett. Wires is the lone receiver to the near side. They throw at the wires. It was open, but it was too high. Yes, that was, uh, that was just too high. And as you just said, wires was wide open. And you won't see Junior Hans miss too many throws like that. But nonetheless, it's going to be third down and seven. Wobbled with the ball on the Shalik 37-yard line. 2.57 to go here in the first half. And, buddy, this is one of those situations here where, you know, you don't – we've talked about this earlier in the game with a couple of situations. You don't need all seven yards here. You know, if you can get three or four, get inside Shalik's 35-yard line, you would go for it on fourth down. But obviously you want to get some positive yardage here on this third down play. Hans fakes a handoff. He's going to roll to his right, cuts it back in the middle of the field, still on his feet, and spins himself down at the 22-yard line. I'll tell you what, that was a great move on a couple of, for a couple of different reasons by Junior Hans as he takes that, as he kept the football and he went off the right side of his offensive line then he cut it back to the left, and he was able to hit another gap of grass, and he, was, he went untouched, and wisely, instead of trying to make more yardage, he took himself out of the play by going down to the turf instead of taking a big hit. Yeah, if there's anybody who needs to live to, to play another play, it's Junior Hans. He takes a beating out there, and you're right, buddy. He had a couple Shalik players coming at him, and he did the smart thing just to kind of throw himself down at their feet. First and 10 at the 22 of Shalik. This has been a good game so far. 2.20 to go before halftime. Hans takes the snap, back to pass, and it's incomplete. Diving effort made over there by Nyland Sutton. I, that ball may have gotten tipped at the line of scrimmage. It kind of came out a little funky. Unless it just came out of his hand strangely, but that had a, a weird spin to it. And it falls incomplete. Second down and 10, 2.12 to go in the half. Well, nonetheless, plenty of time. Wildwood in, in very good, um, you know, they're in the middle of the field on the 22-yard line of the Cougars. So, uh, you know, they have an opportunity right here. Positive yards. That's You don't need to get all 10 right now in this play. Hans hands it off to Ortiz Centeno. He maybe got a yard. And they're going to mark him down for no gain here, I think. Yeah, and I. And I it's going to be third down and 10. And that's, uh, yeah, he just didn't, he was not able to get anything um, out of that uh, hole between the guard and the tackle on the left side. So again, as Brian just said, third and 10, 135, the clock's ticking left here in this first half. Big play right here for the Warriors on this third down and 10. Hans rolls to his right. Throws, intercepted. Intercepted down at the five yard line. And Dylan Sheehan coming up with the interception. It's 
And again, that ball right there, that was over. Uh, Hans overthrew all his wide receivers. It almost, you almost makes you wonder if one of the wide receivers for a while would slipped and fell down. I mean, the only player there was Sheehan. Well, I, you know, two things going on there, buddy. I think again, the ball didn't come out of his hands proper, out of his hand properly, and, and obviously he's got that wind behind him too. So, I think that sailed over the head of the intended receiver. And nonetheless, Shalik will have it. First and 10 at their own 10 with 108 to go. I believe Shalik has two timeouts left. That's what, that's what it says on the scoreboard as well. Kenai Simmons takes the snap, keeps it, breaks a tackle, and then is taken down after a gain of about six. Shalik doesn't seem to be any in any particular hurry, buddy. They may be happy with just going into halftime with this seven nothing lead. Well, they're 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 driving right now into that um, you know bit of a breeze, right? And obviously they you know now they they still have over 80 yards to go. Now they're gonna throw. Simmons looking. No, now he's gonna keep it. We have a flag down. Simmons runs out of bounds up close to the 30. We have a couple of flags down. And uh, I think Nick Croce was leveled with an illegal block by Shalik. And that's going to take him back. Yeah, Croce, I think he really got blindsided, Brian. Yeah. I mean, he went down on the ground and kind of looked around like, what was that? And thankfully, the official saw it. Twenty-one seconds to go here in the first half. Well, it's the Cougars seven, the Warriors zero. It, it actually was called a hold, so it goes back ten, and this probably will be the final play of the half. And Shalik may not even snap it. And it looks like they won't. So we'll go to halftime with Shalik leading 7 nothing. Cape Atlantic Live Sports Broadcast and the CapeAtlanticLive.com website are proudly supported by Ribeye Steaks, serving the finest Angus Ribeye Steak sandwiches, sausage, roast pork, and much more, all on the freshest rolls in South Jersey. Be sure to check out Ribeyes at many of the major festivals and weekend events throughout Cape May County. For more info on Ribeye Steaks, 609-602-3378. The Wildwood Recreation Department and the Byrne Community Center proudly support high school football on CapeAtlanticLive.com. Be sure to check out their big event for the Halloween season, a trunk or treat in a haunted house at the Burn Community Center on Friday, October 27th from 5 to 8 p.m. 609-522-5837 for more information. Be sure to check out the Mud Hen Brewing Company, the Dog Tooth Bar and Grill, and Poppy's Brick Oven Pizza and Kitchen in Wildwood for great dining and entertainment experiences for the entire family. And congratulations to the Mud Hen on recently being named the best brew pub in New Jersey. The Mud Hen, the Dog Tooth, and Poppies proudly support CapeAtlanticLive.com. So Shalik, buddy, capitalized on that Wildwood turnover, and they lead 7-0 at the half. Well, and that's what happened. You know, it was a game. Um, obviously, right there, they, they got the turnover and, and put them in excellent field position, and the Cougars took it right in. So, you know, now Wildwood, they need to regroup. Defensively, they're playing outstanding. I mean, you cannot fault them on any – on anything that's happening on the defensive end. And right now Except we have, we have to take a break. Seven nothing well, Wildwood will be back with the audio for the second half. I'm not going
back here at Wildwood High School. Maxwell Field to be specific, not Wildwood High School, but Wildwood High trailing Shalik 7-0 here on Cape Atlantic Live. At CapeAtlanticLive.com, I'm Brian Kniff. Buddy Tarbotten doing his usual halftime routine of shaking hands and kissing babies. Sam Cohen handling the live video stream on CapeAtlanticLive.com. Omer's Appliance Service is a proud supporter of Cape Atlantic Live, a family owned and operated business since 1974. Omer's Appliance Service is all the top appliance brands. Give Omer's Appliance a call, 609-368-4444, or log on to omersappliance.com. Bow Harbor Hotels in Wildwood Crest support high school football in Cape Atlantic Live and CapeAtlanticLive.com, a beautiful oceanfront resort. The Bow Harbor sits directly on one of the East Coast's best beaches in Wildwood Crest. Know someone planning a vacation or needs a room for a night or two? Have them check out the Bow Harbor through BowHarborHotels.com or by calling 609-522-3333. Four, three. Square One Design has nearly 20 years of experience designing websites, building online marketing campaigns, and creating custom web applications. Square One Design is a proud supporter of high school football on CapeAtlanticLive.com. The Cabrera companies are a strong supporter of local sports coverage on CapeAtlanticLive.com. Whether it's buying or renting property at the Jersey Shore, management services for homeowners and condo associations, or residential home repairs and home improvements, be sure to check out Cabrera Companies, locally owned and operated in Wildwood Crest. CabreraCompanies.com or call 855-633-2300. Need a place to park your vehicle ahead of a great day or evening out in the Wildwoods? Check out Smitty's Parking with two locations on Ocean Avenue, just steps from the world-famous Wildwoods Boardwalk. Don't forget that the Smitty's location at Young's Avenue has great rates on all kinds of bike rentals. Smitty's Parking, 609-522-9100. One, four. So, Shalik certainly had the advantage in offensive yards gained, buddy, I believe, in that first half. But they have just the 7-0 lead, which they were able to get on a short 11-yard drive after a Wildwood interception. So, Wildwood's going to get the ball to start the second half here. So, this will be a critical... Uh, possession for the Warriors to see if they can get something going. Well, Shalik did not have any big plays offensively. Right. And, the, yes, the, their touchdown came on a very short field after that Warrior turnover. Um, and Wildwood did a good job in containing some of the explosiveness that Shalik does have. Although uh, Reggie Williams, or excuse me, Reggie Allen, he carried 13 times in that first half for 60 yards, and he had that the uh, the one rushing touchdown. That was a two-yard run. So you know that was one of the things. But you know they contained. They didn't allow Allen to bust loose for any major big gains. Everything was done in, in little chunks. Right. Which is what you want to see. Um, obviously, if you're the uh, you know the defensive coaches of the Warriors. And, uh, Buddy, we had a uh, blast in the past, a Benny Langford sighting tonight. Wow. Wildwood grad, good basketball player. Wildwood does <laughs> doing very well working in law enforcement down in Broward County, Florida, which means he's doing much better than we are from yeah. January through April. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he is. And I'll tell you what, you, you know, Benny was one heck of a player for the Wildwood Warriors on the hardwood floor. Um, a big, strong, left-handed guy who really knew how to get to the rim. And speaking of which, um, excuse me, Priscilla, where are you going? Oh, the coach's wife just stopped by to say hello. Salik will kick off. And it will be Hunter Dragata to tee it up. Hans and Troiano back deep. And this time, Dragada, he has a big leg and he's kicking with the wind. We'll see how they handle this kick here. He tries to bomb it toward the end zone. He does, and it will go into the end zone for a touchback. And Wildwood will take over first and 10 at their own 20. And I'll tell you, you know, Brian, Coach Wilson speaks very highly of Hunter Dragada. 
he's just a sophomore. And as you said, he's got that big leg. He hit that one field goal earlier in the season of 32 yards. He's just attempted two, but he was also four for four on his extra point attempts. And then he nailed the one here today, the extra point. So he's now a perfect five for five on the season. Well, important here for Wildwood to get something going offensively uh, to, at, at the very least, flip the field position a little bit. First and 10 for Wildwood. I believe the wind's actually picked up a little bit here now that the sun's gone down, which is a little rare. They fake the handoff. Hans is going to run. Now, now he throws it outside to Troiano, who's got a first down up across the 30, and there's going to be a late hit out of bounds on that. Yeah, that's going to be an 11 or 12 yard pickup on that exchange between Hans and Triano. And, and I don't know if it's a late hit or if it's targeting. May have been leading with the helmet. They just indicated personal foul. Either way, it's a 15 yard penalty. And that's certainly going to help the field position. That's going to move the ball all the way out to the Wildwood 46. Well, again, right now, that's positive energy the Warriors should be feeling and being able to feel, feed off of. The first and 10 for the Warriors at their, at their own 46. Trailing 7 0, 11.52 to go, third quarter. Triano goes in motion. Hans fakes, he's gonna run, cuts it back, and he's gonna run out of bounds after a pickup of about seven. Well, right there again, Junior Hans showing, you know, he's a senior and he's showing his, his smartness, his alertness, and his ability, instead of taking a hit for maybe another yard, he, he steps out of bounds, you know, with that big, uh, they, they moving him back? Well, it, 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 Obviously, from where we are, we can't see exactly where he went out of bounds. So it's a gain of six, second and four. One of the things that's interesting, buddy, is that Shalik is basically playing with five defensive backs. And you wonder if Wildwood will try to exploit that and run the ball more. Wildwood actually has, you know, even though they're spread out with their receivers, Wildwood has Shalik a little outnumbered in the, in the box, so to speak. Second down and four. And we're going to have a delay of game penalty as Wildwood didn't pay attention to the game clock. Wow, that hurts. Yeah, the now the second and four is going to turn into a second and nine. Yeah, obviously you don't need a, uh, you know, a penalty in that situation, moving you back another, you know, five yards. As Brian just said, it will be now now be second and nine. Putting the ball back on the Warrior 47 yard line. Three receivers split to this near side. Hans back to pass, out in the flat. Rossett was open, he underthrew it. That's a tough throw, you know, from the left hash all the way to the wide side of the, uh, uh, the right wide side of the field, and it fell short. That's one of those, you know, Hans has to take a little extra look too, buddy, because that ball's in the air such a long time. You know, that's one of those that it, 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 if, if you're not throwing it into a wide open area, it can turn into a pick six pretty quickly. So bring up third down and nine at the Warrior 47. And a big third down play coming up right here for the Warriors. Hans fakes. He's going to run, and he gets up across midfield. It'll bring up fourth down. Yeah, he actually picked up four yards on that, on that run. Uh, we'll call it three yards. 
So as Brian just said, it's gonna bring up a fourth down. It's gonna be fourth and uh, about six yards to go. Yeah, let's see what happens here. I mean, Wildwood's been known to gamble in situations like these. I think this is one you absolutely have to kick it away. You, you know, you're already down seven, nothing. You don't want to give Shalik a short field. Well, again, Wildwood lines up offensively. This doesn't mean they won't punt it. Hans takes the snap, hands it off. Oh boy. No gain, Shalik's gonna take over on downs. You know, to me, buddy, you know, on, on fourth and seven at midfield, it's risky enough to go for it. If you're gonna go for it, you gotta have your best player trying to make a play. Yeah, that's gotta be Junior Hans with an option to run or pass if you're gonna go for it. But Shalik now will have it at midfield. Yeah, and again, you're, you're absolutely correct. Um, you know, last week Ortiz ran for minus six yards. So it's I, not like he's a big gainer. First and 10 for Shalik right at midfield after they stop Wildwood on downs. They hand it off to Allen. He's still on his feet. S still fighting for yards. And he's gonna have a gain of about 12. That was all Reggie Allen on that play. Boy, if you talk about second and third effort, he just kept up while we couldn't bring him down. Looks like one of the officials got shaken up on that play. They stopped the clock momentarily to check on him. So, Ball will be on the Wildwood 39-yard line. Will, will, will be first and 10, 20, 10, 21 to go here in this third quarter. And now they reset it, clock is running. Shalik leading seven, nothing. First and 10 at the Wildwood 39. Hand off to Allen, and he picks up about four. And again, right up the middle, off the uh, off the left guard that time, and Allen just keeps the ball tucked in, and he keeps pumping those feet, and picks up those four yards. It's going to bring up a second down and six. Yeah, you know, the interior of Wildwood's defensive line, buddy, has to start making the plays. You know, they're running everything, almost everything inside. Second down and six. Simmons to run. Bounces it outside. He's got a first down and goes down, out of bounds inside the 30. And we have a late flag, and this is going to be a penalty on Wildwood for, for uh, unnecessary roughness after the play. And I've, again, that's not a very good uh, penalty. Wildwood does not need to be giving up big chunks of yardage via the yellow flag. So this will be a personal foul that'll put the ball inside the 20 yard line. He's going to put it inside the 15, down to the 14. Yeah, and the way this game has gone for Wildwood offensively, buddy, they can't afford to fall behind by two scores. They just have had trouble moving the ball all night. Simmons hands to Allen again right up the middle. 
And again, a pickup of four or five. And again, that time, Allen, he goes off the left tackle and uh, his line, they're doing a good job of giving him enough uh, daylight where he can really then go well, through, I, I, keeps his legs moving. And you're, and you're in a situation here, buddy, where you know, if Wildwood can't get stops with its defensive front, you're going to have to start sending linebackers and hoping you're guessing. And then what happens is you leave yourself exposed if you don't guess correctly, and it could lead to a big play. Second down and six, ball at about the 10-yard line. 8.15 to go, third quarter. Shalik holding this 7-0 lead. Handoff again to Allen. And this time, Wildwood does a better job up front, at least initially anyway. Allen got through after the whistle blew. Yeah. Let's see where they mark this. Allen's helmet flew off at the end of that play. Looks like it's going to be just inside the 10, possibly on the 9-yard line. So that's a pickup of about two. It's going to be third and three. Clock approaching seven and a half to go. Well, if Wildwood ever could get a big play defensively, this would be it here. Third down and a long three for Shalik. Ball at the Wildwood eight. Handoff inside and running into the end zone is Levi Feeney Childers, and again, right up the middle for Shalik. Yeah, and that's Shalik is just beating Wildwood up along the uh, along the uh, line of scrimmage right now. And right there, it was a that was a big hole, and uh, Feeney Childers hit that hit it very quickly, and he just danced into the end zone from about nine out, nine yards out for an easy touchdown. Well, and again. You know, the kick by Murata is no good. Misses the uh, left upright. So it's 13-0 Shalik, 7-15 to go in the third quarter. Crest Savings Bank is a proud supporter of Cape Atlantic Live and CapeAtlanticLive.com. Banking since 1919 with branches across Cape May County to best serve you. Check out all the services Crest Savings Bank has to offer at CrestSavings.com. Hall's Carpet Care is a proud sponsor of Cape Atlantic Live Sports Broadcast and the CapeAtlanticLive.com website. Specializing in carpet and upholstery cleaning, air duct and dryer vent cleaning, and home watch services, Hall's Carpet Care gives you the clean you expect and the service you deserve. Check them out at HallsCarpetCare.com or give them a call at 609-463-3733. Ulmer's Appliance Service is a proud supporter of Cape Atlantic Live and CapeAtlanticLive.com, a family-owned and operated business since 1974. Ulmer's Appliance Service is all the top appliance brands. Give Ulmer's Appliance a call, 609-368-4444. Be sure to check out the Mud Hen Brewing Company, the Dog Tooth Bar and Grill, and Poppy's Brick Oven Pizza and Kitchen in Wildwood for great dining and entertainment experiences for the entire family. And congratulations to the Mud Hen on recently being named the best brew pub in New Jersey. The Mud Hen, the Dog Tooth, and Poppy's proudly support CapeAtlanticLive.com. So, again, buddy, the, the decision to go for it on fourth and seven uh, at midfield really – bites the Warriors, and they now trail 13-0 as a 50-yard drive by Shalik is finished off by a short touchdown run by Levi Feeney Childers. Well, and again, it, it gave, you know, it gave Shalik the football, you know, on half a field. I mean, and it just was easier for them, obviously, to put together a drive, and the end result is six points. Kickoff goes into the end zone again, and Wildwood will have it at the 20. So 7.15 to play here in the third quarter. It's the Shalik Cougars 13, the Warriors 0. And to say that Wildwood needs to get something going offensively would just really point out the obvious and an understatement. Up in Glassboro, Middle Township trails Glassboro 14-12 midway through the third quarter.
First and 10 for Wildwood. At their own 20. What Wildwood does not need to do is rush things and turn the ball over. They hand it off inside to Ortiz Centeno and he gets nowhere. Maybe a yard. Second and nine. You know, last week, buddy, Wildwood turned two slant passes, short passes, into long touchdowns. Shalik has completely taken that away by playing both safeties deep. Well, and they're, and they're basically, as I said, playing with five defensive backs almost. Well, Coach Wilson said prior to the game, they got to take number two out of the game and they feel they'll be very successful. And that's so far what they have been able to do. Hans on a quarterback draw here, and he picks up maybe a yard or two. So far, that's what they've been able to do. And at number two is Junior Hans. And as Brian just said on that carry right there, um, let's see where the spot is. Pick up third and seven. two-yard gain, 5.45 to go in this third quarter. Boy, why would better hurry up out of this huddle because they're inside 10 seconds on the play clock here. And now they're going to have to call a timeout. So Wildwood, late in the play clock there, calls a timeout, trailing 7 0. They'll have third and seven following the timeout. The Wildwood Crest Police Officers Association and the department's new canine unit are proud supporters of CapeAtlanticLive.com and Cape Atlantic Live Sports Broadcast. For more information about supporting the Wildwood Crest Police Officers Association and the Wildwood Crest Canine Unit, contact Wildwood Crest Police. 609-522-2456. Not For Long Media is a strong supporter of Cape Atlantic Live Sports Broadcasts. Managed by NFL veteran and Cape May resident Colin Thompson, Not For Long Media is a content hub made up of several podcasts and YouTube shows talking all things sports, food, drinks, travel, culture, and much more. You can check them out at notforlongmedia.com. Square One Design has nearly 20 years of experience designing websites, building online marketing campaigns, and creating custom web applications. Square One Design is a proud sponsor of Cape, of, uh, CapeAtlanticLive.com and Cape Atlantic Live's sports broadcasts. And so Brian, here we go on third and seven. Wildwood needs to play with a little urgency. You can't get a, you waste the time out because you can't beat the play clock. Well, now Wildwood tried to go double count again. And it's another illegal procedure penalty. Well, the double count is intended to draw the defense offside. But why would the offense, they bid on their own double count. And as Brian just said, they lose, you know, they have to be marked back five yards. Third and 12. Hans is going to try to run. And he picks up maybe four or five. And it's gonna bring up fourth and long. So fourth and seven at their own 23, inside five minutes to go. third quarter. And again, this is an obvious punting situation for the Warriors. Let's see what Hans does here on fourth and seven. Takes the snap, he will punt it. 
Nice low line drive is going to bounce. And go inside the 45 and be downed at the 42. So that's going to be a 35, 35 yard punt. And considering he was kicking into the wind, and as you said, Brian, he got a, they got a nice big bounce, did Wildwood. And they were down there to make sure that they then downed the football. First and 10 for Shalik at their own 42. 4.11 to go, third quarter. Simmons back to pass, throws it out in the flat, and uh, going to his knees to make the catch was Dylan Sheehan, so this will go down as a loss. Obviously, once a knee goes down in high school football, it is, play is dead. So th that play will actually go for a loss of four on the, a loss of three on the completion, and it's second down at 13. Back at the 39. But Wildwood needs a big play on defense here, buddy. Showing blitz. They hand it off to Allen and they get there. Eric Jordan up front actually made the tackle with help from James Wires. Good play by Jordan. That's a loss of two for Allen. And again, as you said, Brian, that is what Wildwood, Wildwood right now, now they have Shalik in a third and long, third and 15. The ball on the Shalik 38 yard line. Again, they need, the defense needs to come up big, come up with a stop. There's plenty of time in this football game. Three minutes to play here in the third quarter plus the entire fourth quarter. But now you have to stop Shalik. You have to stop Shalik's offense. Third and 15. It's a toss outside to Allen, turning the corner, taken down, not until he gets about 11, it's gonna bring up fourth and four. And uh, let's see what Shalik does here. The ball on their side of midfield. Oh, buddy, I think we have a flag down. We do, it's a hold. And wow, yeah, yeah Wild, Wildwood's gotta take that back. You have to make them go back, I th I believe. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Because it's too short. I, I mean, that was a great run by Allen to put his team within striking distance. Of that first down, yeah. Yes. And so I'll tell you what, if I'm Shalik at right there, if that would have been fourth and short, I'm going for it. Probably. Or at least you think about it anyway. Well, Wildwood has not been able to move the ball against, you know, my Four defense. So now, now it's going to be fourth and about 25, or third and 25 for Shalik here. And now Shalik's a little confused. They got to call a timeout. It looked like uh, Levi Feeney Childers was not uh, sure of the play. He was kind of dancing around back there, looking around in the coaching staff decides to call a timeout ahead of this third and 25 play. Need a place to park your vehicle ahead of a great day or evening out in the Wildwoods? Check out Smitty's Parking with two locations on Ocean Avenue, just steps from the world-famous Wildwood Boardwalk. And don't forget that Smitty, the Smitty's location at Young's Avenue has great rates on all kinds of bike rentals. That's Smitty's Parking, 609-522-9114. The Cabrera companies are a strong supporter of local sports coverage on Cape Atlantic Live and CapeAtlanticLive.com. Whether it's buying or renting property at the Jersey Shore, management services for homeowners and condo associations, or residential home repairs and home improvements, be sure to check out Cabrera Co Companies, locally owned and operated in Wildwood Crest. Log on to CabreraCompanies.com or give them a call at 855 633 2300. Out of the timeout, third and 25 for Shalik. And Brian, did you notice tonight there's been absolutely no coughing on my part? I must, think must that dropped, fall, dropped it off at the funeral home. Well, the, yeah, that I think that fall on the lower bleachers might have knocked Simmons it out. Simmons rolling. 
Still rolling. Hit and taken down by James Wires for a sack. And that's going to be a loss of about nine. I'll tell you what, James Wires is having one very good football game here tonight, Brian. And Shalik's going to have to punt here with two minutes to go in the third quarter. Cougars leading 13 nothing. Simmons the punter. Han standing back just on the Wildwood side of midfield. Wow, Shalik's got to take another timeout, I believe. That's the, the referee yes. on the far side pointed the wrong way, but it is a Shalik timeout. Well, the referee pointed the right way. And it's fourth down and 30. Well, the original referee that called the timeout uh, on the far side of the field pointed the wrong way. Well, I'm talking about the guy with the white hat. Yeah, well, <laughs> the official on the far side where, where Shalik <laughs> called the timeout actually pointed toward Wildwood side. So 140 to go in the third. It's 13 0 Shalik. Cape Atlantic Live Sports Broadcast and the CapeAtlanticLive.com website are proudly supported by Ribeye Steaks. Serving the finest Angus Ribeye Steak sandwiches, sausage, roast pork, and much more. All on the freshest rolls in South Jersey. Be sure to check out Ribeyes at many of the major festivals and weekend events throughout Cape May County. For more info on Ribeye Steaks, 609 602 3378. Well, again, this is another opportunity for the Warriors to get this football back in good field position. Simmons gets it away. Hans will field it at the 46. Cuts it back. He's going to try to run across the field, still on his feet, and taken down at the 49. The Wildwood will have good field position at the Shallock 49-yard line with 1.29 to go in the third, and they're down 13-0. They've got to get moving. Yeah, right now you, now you have to play with a sense of urgency. You're going to have to explain to me, buddy, how this ball is being spotted on the 50. But, I mean, Hans clearly got taken down at the 49, but they mark it at the 50. Well, yes. <laughs> That's a very, uh, very good point. But, again, as you said, there's 129 to go, third quarter. The Warriors trail Shalik 13 to zero, but Wildwood gets the football back, first and 10 on the 50. Hans back to pass, looking. Throws it out in the flat, incomplete. Looking for Harley Busham, and it went through his hands. Difficult catch, but he'd probably tell you he should have had it. You know, you wonder, buddy, if you would make this adjustment on the fly. Shalik is dropping so many players in coverage. If you don't just say, send all your receivers deep and let Junior run and make a play. Well, the way it's going right now, I mean, obviously a shot like that would not be a bad idea. Second and 10 at midfield. Hans takes the snap. He's going to try to run, and he's taken down. And that's going to be at least a two-yard loss. Oh, we got flags well, well, now. I think that's it's going to be, going be taunting. Yeah, taunting, taunting. on, taunting on Shalik. Absolutely. Wow. And Coach Mike Wilson for the Cougars, he's livid at his team because that was – I mean, everybody in this football stadium could see that happen. And that was an easy call for the official. And that'll give Wildwood a first down. Yeah, the official Fred Lamb pointed the wrong way initially, but this, this penalty is on Shalik. And we'll give Wildwood a first down. And it'll move the ball inside the Shalik 40. Well, somebody's got to move the football. <laughs> when they eventually yes, move, move the football here. So, 
Yeah, just keep going. I don't even think he knows he knows how many yards he's going. That that uh ref, that official. Middle Township now has an 18-14 lead over Glassboro with nine minutes to go up in Glassboro. That would be a huge win for Middle Township. First and 10 for Wawa. They trail 13-0, 1-10 to go third quarter. Ball at the Shallock 37-yard line. Hans takes the snap. He's going to run. Runs it straight up the field. Picks up about three or four. And again, that's going to depend on the spot, but I... I'm going to mark him down at the 34. It'll be second down and seven. I don't agree with that spot. That should have been marked down at the 33, but needless to say, I'm up here with a pen with a pen in my hand, not down there with a whistle and a flag. Thank goodness. <laughs> But then again, we have to endure listening to you. So. <laughs> second Absolutely. And second and seven for Wildwood. 15 seconds to go in the third quarter. They trail 13-0. Hans takes the snap. Throws incomplete. Wow. He was looking for Harley Busham. Busham's asking for a penalty. He's saying he was held. But nothing forthcoming. And Wildwood, unfortunately, is going to have to run another play into the crosswind. Well, that's why I, I thought on that second down play, buddy, Wildwood might run the ball. So then if it got the third down, it would be with the with the wind at their back. But as you said, now they got to, on third and seven, most likely have to put the ball in the air against the wind here on what will, barring a penalty, be the final play of the third quarter. Hans takes the snap, throws it out in the flat, incomplete. Too far ahead of Ryan Troiano. That was not a good pass. And it's going to bring up fourth down. There's actually one second left oh, in the wow. period. So Wildwood's got to run fourth down against the wind. Oh, oh. Now they just took the time off the clock, and now the – Head referee Fred Lamb is saying there's one second left. Now they, they got to uh, they got to get on the same page here because the officials on the far side are, are moving the chain gang, and now they're going to send them back in place, and they're going to tell Wildwood to run this play here. Now I, I don't know what's going on here. I think Shalik thinks the quarter's over. This is not a timeout unless someone called a timeout here. Any tent places around, buddy? We need one to put on this circus. Yeah, absolutely. Fourth and seven for Wildwood at the Shallock 34-yard line, and this will most certainly be the final play of the, of the third quarter. 13-0 Cougars. Clock says triple zeros, but there is one second to go. Hans takes the snap, looking, has a lot of time, throws, caught. First down, Ryan Troiano, and that should be a late hit. There comes the flag. Troiano was pulled down. A good five yards Absolutely. out of bounds. Yes. And that's going to be a first down and more. Well, up until that throw right there, Brian, Junior Hans was 0 for 7, including in an interception. He Two had, interceptions. He had not completed a pass since at the minus the one quarter, yard completion to Harley Busham. Nothing. And you, I have not, and correct me if I'm wrong, I think that's the first time he went to Ryan Triano all game. Well, he tried the previous play in the flat, but threw it too far, and it was incomplete. But they get the first down and the penalty that'll get marched off. It's 13-0 Shalik as we go to the fourth quarter, but the Warriors 
are driving. And uh, the Wildwood Recreation Department and the Burn Community Center proudly support high school football on CapeAtlanticLive.com. Be sure to check out their big event for the Halloween season, a trunk or treat and a haunted house at the Burn Community Center on Friday, October 27th from 5 to 8. 609-522-5837 for more information. And, buddy, they just made an announcement as the uh, about tomorrow the Wildwood-Wildwood Catholic rivalry finally renewed. They'll, they'll have a cross-country meet at 9 on the boardwalk, tennis at 9.30 at Fox Park, and then behind us at Caitlin Anzalo Memorial Field, they'll have the boys' soccer game at 11. So that'll be uh, some things to check out tomorrow between Wildwood and Wildwood Catholic. This game here, 13-0, Wildwood trailing Shalik, but the Warriors are driving as we get set to start this fourth quarter here. And, and buddy, at this point, Critical that Wildwood gets points here on this drive, and and, and obviously a, a, a touchdown, a field goal really wouldn't help them. Well, and again, too, I think Coach Loomis, you know, they need to recognize they need to get the Junior Hans Ryan Triano combo clicking. However, um, you line them up, yeah, you know, right now Ryan Triano needs to touch the football, and right there, that's the reason why, and that takes pressure off of Junior Hans. Yeah, and when you have a, uh, an athlete like Ryan Triano, you just need you, you want him to see you want to see him touch the football as well as Wires, who has also you know been able to do some nice things last week when he uh, you know when the ball was in his hands. But first and ten now on the Warrior. 12-yard line. And an early, early uh, score. Lower Kate May was leading Pennsville 7-0 midway through the first quarter, but that was a while ago. We'll see if we can get an update. Hans back to pass. Looking, throwing toward the corner, and Ryan Troiano trying to make a diving effort in the back of the end zone incomplete. Ryan just kind of put his hands out looking at the official. He felt a Shallot player was kind of draped on him, but nonetheless... At least that time, Junior Hans threw the football in an area where the only player that was going to have right. a chance of catching it was Ryan Triano. So it'll be second and 10 at the Shallock 11. Five seconds into this fourth quarter you can see the score on your screen Wildwood certainly needs a touchdown here Hans back to pass again has some time flushed out to the right he's going to run we're gonna oh, this is gonna come slide. back yep. for holding he got a good gain out of it too of eight yards but this is going to come back this will be a loss of ten So it's going to make it a second down and 20, pushing the ball back to the 22-yard yeah, line. And you know, buddy, the, the thing is, that hold didn't really affect the play. Hans was already past that area where the infraction occurred. And Wildwood was going to have a third and two. And instead, they're going to have a second and 20. And again, Wildwood does not need to get all 20 yards back on this play. They got three downs. They got to move the ball, pick up that first down, or put it in the end zone, but you got three downs to do it. Hans throws the wires incomplete. Threw it high, Wires couldn't come down with it. And I, I believe if James Wires, if he had that to do again, he's not happy with himself. You know, he feels that ball hit him in the hands, even though he had a leap for it, he should have caught it. Well, uh, let's face it, buddy, you know, you're, it, we all know our, our, our climate conditions here. You know, we're at the Jersey Shore at night on a humid day. Yes. And when that ball's thrown away from the body, it's awfully hard to bring it in with just your hands. Yes. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, if he hits wires in the numbers, it might have been a 
promising play for the Warriors, but it was thrown too high. And again, 11.44 to go in this football game. Shalik 13, Wildwood zero. The Warriors now facing a third and 20. Empty backfield here, five receivers set. Hans back, looking, throws it out in the flat, dropped. That time it was dropped by Gabe Rossett. So now it's going to be a fourth and 20. I think there's a parade about to start on Young and Park Boulevard Avenue. There's an awful lot of lights over there. 11.39 to go. While we're trailing by two touchdowns. And it's fourth and 20. And, uh, you know, as unlikely as it is, Wildwood probably needs to convert this to have a chance to stay in this football game. Down two scores here in the fourth quarter. Hans is back, has some time, has a lot of time, rolls to his right. Throws downfield and it's incomplete. He had no receivers open. Again, that was just a great job by the Shalik defense, Brian. They took away all of uh, Junior's options, you know, and, and he got so close to that sideline by the time, you know, the play um, developed that he had no choice, but there was nobody to throw the football to, and there was nowhere for him to run. Well, I, yeah, I, I don't know what, obviously we don't know what the exact play call was, but all of Wildwood's receivers were way down the field toward the end zone. And you would have thought that maybe somebody could have broken it off and gone a little short and maybe try to catch and run for the first down. But that's neither here nor there. Schalk takes over. First and 10. Their own 22. They give it off to Allen, who's still on his feet. And finally, the whistle blows after a gain of about nine. And that's what you're going to see here in this fourth quarter, a steady diet of Reggie Allen. Yeah, I mean, unless it's a, a, a strange third and long play, I don't, I don't see Shalik putting the ball in the air for the rest of the game. Well, especially you're going in, you're going into a little bit of that wind right, right. now. So, you know, let's, they're going to want to play error-free football and that is going to be putting it in uh, Reggie Allen's hands and uh, Levi Feeney Charles uh, Childers as well. They hand it off again. And again, Allen with a nice game. He picks up about five this time in a first down. Well, again, that's all the Cougars want to do. Coach Mike Wilson will be very satisfied with moving the sticks, moving the chains, you know, whether it's a two-play two, two play drive to pick up the first down or a three-play. Then the clock continues to run by keeping the ball on the ground right in the middle of the field. Hand off again. Now we're under 10 minutes to play. That time Wildwood holds Allen to a gain of two or three. Bring up second and seven. Lower Cape May leads Pennsville 14-7. Boy, Lower Cape May needs this win. They need a yeah. big bounce back from yep. that shocking loss last week to Clayton. 14-7, late second quarter. They hand it off, and this is Feeney Childers, and that's a big gain of about 22 in the first down. Well, again, and then Childers, Feeney Childers, just the sophomore, 
but he, he makes big plays. You know, he's definitely become a go-to type guy behind Reggie, Reggie Allen for Coach Wilson's squad. So first and 10 for Shalik at the Wildwood 40. 8.40 to go, clock is moving. Another handoff. Feeney Childers bouncing it outside and finally taken out of bounds by James Wires at the 24 yard line. It's a gain of 17. And you know, the other thing you gotta take into account, Brian, you know, why would they, that, that defense has got to be wearing down. It's hot, it's humid. You know, they're wearing a lot of equipment. And, uh, you know, it's not your typical football night. And they've been on the field. They've done one hell of a job this entire game. But they've been out there a long time. Yeah, and one of the things that you have happen, buddy, is Wildwood, such a pass-oriented team, that extends the game. You know, you're in complete passes. You know, that makes the game longer with the clock stopping. Hand off to Allen. Big run for Allen. He's up close to another first down. Gonna mark him just short. Second and one at the 11. Eight minutes to go. And if Shalik can finish this drive, he'll certainly put away the victory here. Hand off to Allen. Short game, but he didn't need much. Gain of about two and a first down. And it'll be first and goal with the nine. And again, you know, Brian, it's been with those two big runs by Feeney Childers, you know, they're the first real big plays we have seen Shalik pull off. And he comes in with a fresh set of legs, goes for 22. Next carry, he goes for 17. That's a 39-yard chunk. Bang. Right. Allen again. And he is in the end zone for a touchdown. Well, actually, buddy, they're going to mark him. Are they marking him short, or did they count that touchdown? We have one official on the near side. Signaled touchdown. Well, you know, we have to take into account, too, we talked about how the, the heat and humidity is getting to the Warrior defense. And they are counting it as a touchdown. And the heat, heat and humidity has, has probably taken its toll on the officials. 6.58 to go, and that's going to put it away. Shalk leads 19-0. And it looks like the Cougars are going to go for two here. Simmons is going to pass. Uh, rolls. Still on his feet, taken down. Another good tackle by James Wires as the run fails. And so again, it's 19 0 Shallock with 6.58 to go. So, see if Wildwood can get something going offensively here. Bat Harbor Hotels and Wildwood Crest support. High School Football in Cape Atlantic Live, a beautiful oceanfront resort. The Bow Harbor sits directly on one of the East Coast's best beaches. 
in Wildwood Crest. Know someone planning a vacation or needs a room for a night or two? Have them check out the Bow Harbor through bowharborhotels.com or by calling 609-522-3343. So 6.58 to go, and Wildwood trailing 19-0. Hunter Ray, a 25-yard <laughs> run for <coughs> Lower Cape May. You done? Oh, that was the first one. Okay. And Lower Cape May leads Pennsville 21-7, three minutes to go before halftime. Up in Pennsville. But it wasn't last a ride update. Meet. Last update on Middle Township. Glassboro has taken a 22 to 18 lead on a long touchdown pass with three and a half minutes to go. So Middle's gonna have to go down the field there, and which they're quite capable, capable of. Yeah, certainly. <clears throat> Six fifty-eight to go, and see if Wildwood can muster something offensively here. Kick bounces, and will go out of bounds. And I think Wildwood. With, with, with Shallot kicking into the wind, Wildwood may make them re-kick. <clears throat> One thing, you know, other than the taunting penalty, buddy, Shallot's played a pretty clean game. They've had a taunting penalty. They did have one key holding penalty. But, you know, Wildwood's been flagged probably at a two-to-one rate compared to Shallot tonight. Yes, and, you know, and... Some of the Wildwood penalties came at um, really inopportune times that pushed them back, you know, made, made a drive that they had going either, you know, helped halt the drive or made it much longer than it needed to be. And um, Dragato will tee it up again from his own 35 yard line. High but short, taken by Hans at the 20. Bounces outside, cuts it back to the middle. It's taken down at the 42, it's a pretty good return. And Wildwood will take over there, and we'll see if they can get something going. Again, in other games, Glassboro has a 22-18 lead over middle with three and a half to go in the game. Lower Cape May has a 21-7 lead over Pennsville right before halftime. First and 10 for Wildwood at their own 42. It's a handoff. And Harley Busham will get slung to the ground. No game. Yes, there was absolutely no daylight there at all. And as Brian said, it ended up being no gain for the Warriors, so it brings up a second down and 10. Busham's in the backfield with Ortiz Centeno. Hans is back to pass, though, out in the flat, incomplete. Third down and 10, six minutes to go. Obviously, that incomplete pass stops the clock. The 
again, if you want a two-hour and 45-minute high school football game, buddy, just show up to the game that we cover. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> it is the uh, rule of thumb. It's uncanny. Third and ten. Hans fakes, looking deep. Throws it out in the flat to Wires. And Wires will get a short gain. They were trying to get Troiano down the field. And I, 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 I don't know, buddy. Uh, you know, R Ryan Troiano got pushed out of bounds at the 45-yard line, which is a good 15 yards down the field from the line of scrimmage, and there was no flag thrown. And that pass was a uh, three-yard pickup. The ball wasn't in the air yet, so it wouldn't have been pass interference, but still an illegal contact penalty. It's going to bring up a fourth down and eight. While we're going for it here. Thrown out in the flat to Troiano. He's going to have to make people miss. He can't. It's a gain of about three. And Wildwood will turn it over on downs. Shalik will have it at the Wildwood 47. Five thirty-six left to play in this football game here tonight, and yes, you are listening to, you are listening and watching high school football right here on Cape Atlantic Live. Simmons busted play here, and he's taken down by Nico Calajiris. It'll bring up a second and 14. Four-yard loss right there on that play. <clears throat> Puts the ball on the other side of the 50. Shalik on their own 49. Rossett on the outside is very close to being lined up off sides. No penalty. Bouncing it outside is Feeney Childers. And it's a big gain. First down and a lot more inside the 30-yard line. And I'll tell you what, he is quick. He really, really darts with that football, Brian. He makes guys miss. And then he, he finds himself some space. And then he's hard to catch. Well, he's had a big second half. You know, his, his last three runs have gone for 22, 21, and 22 yards. First to 10 for Shalik at the Wildwood 25, 428 to go. Cougars leading 19-0. They're going to go to 3-0 on the season. Wildwood is will be dropping to 1-1. One Hand off to Allen, makes one man miss. And then a good hit there by Nick Croce. Holds Allen to no gain. Michael Zarfati, a nine-yard touchdown reception for Middle Township. They take the lead over Glassboro, 24-22 with 32 seconds left. That has been a thriller up there in Glassboro going back and forth. Hand off again to Allen. And a pickup of about four. And again, you know, there's still a little bit of time left in that game. That would be a huge win for Middle Township on the road. That would be two massive road victories in a row. 
Third down and six to go. For Shalik. Under three minutes, 2.45 to be exact left in this football game. Another handoff, and it is Allen running into the end zone from 21 yards out. He just popped that outside to the right, and nobody was going to catch him, Brian. <clears throat> he just aimed for that pylon on the right, in the right side of the end zone, and uh, sure enough, he was able to get the ball and himself across the goal line. 2.35 to play. It is now 25 to zero. Shalik on top of Wildwood. Dragada on for the extra point kick. Snap is good. The hold was fumbled a little bit, and the timing was thrown off, and Dragada misses, but it's 25 0. Shalik with 2.35 to go. Be sure to check out the Mud Hen Brewing Company, the Dog Tooth Bar and Grill, and Poppy's Brick Oven Pizza and Kitchen in Wildwood for great dining and entertainment experiences for the entire family. And congratulations to the Mud Hen on recently being named the best brew pub in New Jersey. The Mud Hen, the Dog Tooth, and Poppies proudly support CapeAtlanticLive.com. Crest Savings Bank is a proud supporter of Cape Atlantic Live Broadcast and CapeAtlanticLive.com. Banking since 1919 with branches to serve you across Cape May County. Check out all the services Crest Savings Bank has to offer at CrestSavings.com. Com. Not for long, media is a strong supporter of Cape Atlantic Live sports broadcasts and the CapeAtlanticLive.com website. Managed by NFL veteran and Cape May resident Colin Thompson, Not for Long Media is a content hub made up of several podcasts and YouTube shows talking all things sports, food, drinks, travel, culture, and much more. You can check them out at NotForLongMedia.com. Well, there's 2.35 left in tonight's football game, and Shalik has, is coming away with a very impressive road victory. Brian, their first two wins were home games, so this, this is their first uh, away game of the 2023 season as they lead the Warriors now 25-0. to zero. <clears throat> High but short kick. Hans will take it near the 20. And he slung down at the 35. And you wonder what Wildwood's going to do here, but I mean, obviously, you'd like to get on the board. So, you know, they may throw a couple times, see if they can get it down the field. So it is going to be first and 10 on their own 35 yard line, 228 to go. And yet, Brian, you would definitely like to see them, you know, as, a, as the team and the coaching staff, you want to, you know, they want to take something positive away from tonight. A busted play here. Hans dancing around, decides to go down. That's a smart play. And, you know, one thing are, is, uh, excuse me, there is a lot of positive, though. The Warrior defense was outstanding. And I just think for the amount of time during those first three quarters they spent on the field, combine that with this heat and humidity, you know, and, and their numbers aren't well, as much as what Shalik has on their side. No nine. doubt. They just got worn down. Well, I, I, I just, I, I, I go back. Buddy, to the play at midfield. Yes. Wildwood facing a fourth and seven, trailing seven nothing. And they decide to go for it. They run a running play that gets nowhere, gives Shalik a short field. And once the Cougars went up 13 nothing, you can see how deflated Wildwood was. Here's a good run inside. By Ortiz Centeno, he gets five. One twenty to go. See what Wildwood does here. They, they may just decide to run it here. 
and kind of take the clock down. Let's well, see what happens. It's third and 10. They have the ball on their own 35 yard line. They're back at the original line of scrimmage. And now we're under one minute to play. 55 seconds. On stakes the snap, hands off again. Good little run there by Ortiz Sateno, and he picks up six. And that'll be the game. I don't think Wawa's gonna run another play. And that's gonna do it, as Shalik will win it. 25 to nothing here at Maxwell Field as the Cougars pull away in the second half after leading seven nothing at halftime. For Sam Cohen handling the live video stream here for our uh, uh, behind the scenes producer, Matt Ulmer, for Buddy Tarbot, and I'm Brian Kniff. Again, Wildwood falls to Shalik. The Cougars go to three and oh, Wildwood drops to one and one. The final here at Maxwell Field. Shalik 25, Wildwood nothing. Uh, at last report, Middle Township had that lead very late against the Glassboro, 24-22. Lower Cape May was a 21-7, uh, uh, led 21-7 over Pennsville uh, in the second, late in the second quarter. And Here the final is 25-0, Shalik beats Wildwood. And next week we will be at Middle Township, correct? Yes, we will be at Middle Township. We'll, we'll do that in conjunction with Middle Township Athletics and on Cape Atlantic Live. We'll have more details during the week. Follow the website, follow our social media pages. 25-0, Shalik the winner over Wildwood. This has been high school football on Cape Atlantic Live. Thanks for